Hey everyone, it's Dave from BC Bushcraft here again today and welcome to another episode. Um, I haven't done a video for a few weeks now and one of the main reasons why is uh, because I got married. I got married about, I think it's a couple weeks ago now and uh, I was on the honeymoon and all that stuff so I haven't had the time and because I was doing other things obviously that I haven't been able to put a video out so I decided to do a fairly simple video just in my backyard today on some feather sticks. So first things first, when you want to make something like this for a feather stick there's a few things you need to consider before even starting it and uh, one thing is your wood selection uh, you can pretty much make a feather stick out of any type of wood and it's going to work but the more useful woods uh, especially in my area are the coniferous trees or evergreen trees uh, that's because of their high resin content and in particular um, cedar which doesn't have too much resin as you, you might think but uh, cedar is one of the best kindling in my area and it's western red cedar to be more specific some of your best options for feather sticks are uh, dead standing wood that is a coniferous tree will give you a really nice feather stick that being said you can pretty much do it with any piece of wood Another very important thing is to get a really nice straight grained wood. As you can see from here that I've already chopped up. This happens to be maple. Uh, to be more specific, it's big leaf maple, which is the maple that's dominant in my area. But you really want to find one of the things that's going to dictate how good your feather stick is going to come out is how straight your piece of wood is. You can see that there's hardly any knots, there's no things that can get in the way uh, as far as this piece of wood. So that means when you come down with your knife you can make nice even smooth strokes and you're gonna get really long feathers and if you have knots and stuff in your wood right near the end it's, it's not gonna work and it's gonna shorten your stick or you're not gonna be able to get a nice good one. So finding the longest length between knots in a branch that's straight will be one of the most important factors for getting a good feather stick. You can see the general size that this used to be, roughly like that in the diameter. This general idea of a feather stick is basically to increase the surface area of your wood, therefore making it a lot easier to ignite, giving you a large amount of flame in a short period of time and that means you're gonna to have to build on your fire quite quickly once you set this on fire. Another important thing before you get going on your uh, feather sticks is to make sure your knife is as sharp as you can. Preferably have a Scandinavian grind because I could find that they work So the with that being said, let's get started and start making some feather sticks. Okay, so. You now have a after you've sharpened your knife, this happens to be a condor bush floor, which is one of my favorite bushcrafting knives that I have at the moment. Um, just make sure that your knife is as sharp as you can get it and don't get too crazy with sharpening it. But the sharper it is, the better, the easier this process is going to be. So to start off, it's nice to have something solid, whether it is a stick in the ground, a log or stump to work on. And basically you, you, what you want to do is hold it as high as you can, start up as high as you can, and just start making nice, smooth, even strokes down towards the bottom. When you're at the bottom, you're going to want to tilt your knife like this to open up the space. So you're going to come down, open it up, come down, open it up. The more you dig in, the bigger your feathers are going to be. And the general rule of thumb, you want it a curl to at least curl once for it to be an effective feather stick. If you're feathering and your feathers are coming up and they're not curling over on themselves at least once, your feather stick is going most likely not going to be successful. So the lighter the pressure, the finer 
your curls are going to be. And you can actually control the trajectory of where the curls are going to go. If I want the curls going out this way, I start at the tip and I kind of push my blade across it like that, even though that curl fell off. And if I want to go the other way, I start it here and I ever so slightly drag my blade across it towards the tip of the knife. And I can actually even curl it back on itself if I do the opposite direction. So it's good to vary the thickness of your curls throughout your project as well as the direction because then you're going to get a ball like this on both sides. Another thing is, is your curls are going to want to be on the ridges that you're creating when you are doing this. So you can see, hopefully, some of the ridges that are made from going down it and that's where your feather is going to be, right along these paths here and here. Don't worry if you your curls are falling off. They can still obviously be used and collected up. And you can even stuff them back into your feather if you want to. Another good tip is to try to reduce wrist movement, hold it firmly, and just use a stroke like this when you're coming down your feather stick. Sorry if there's noise in the background, I think someone's doing some landscaping. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to speed this up so I can get a, a decent feather stick to show you guys how to light it. And obviously you can spend a large amount of time working on your feather stick, but sometimes I feel it's counterintuitive to devote 20 minutes unless you're in real desperate need and it's actually going to help you a lot. So don't worry about making your feather stick too pretty as long as it's very functional. One major thing is is to always try to keep I'll let that plane go by a little bit. Always try to keep your curls as close as you can to the end and not have your feather stick all the way end up here when you're done with it. You can see maybe from this angle that I'm not going too far up the actual stick itself and I'm producing all of it in a bundle near the end. And you can go as much as you want, because this is going to light. But the more you do it, the bigger your flame is going to be, the more successful your fire is going to be. So I could obviously continue, keep going and going and going and make a really big feather like this, but I'm going to just finish this one off. Excuse me of the wind, if there is any. So to finish it off, I usually will start making little strokes on either side like that to kind of create a V down the center because I'm going to light this with a ferro rod I want to have a little pocket for the ember or for the ferrocerium to actually hit and ignite the feather stick so I do that by making really small kind of feathers either side like that to make kind of a triangular point here and then I'll go down that point 
I make really tiny feathers. So then I have very fine curls in here that help basically give this thing flame. So tips on lighting a, a feather like this. Sometimes it's nice to have soft ground or something, but you can even hold it with your waist like that so your hands are free and you can kind of control where the flames are going to go, sorry, where your ferrocerium is going to go. I prefer to use like a little hacksaw striker than the actual back of my knife, just because I feel it's a little clumsy coming in like this and you're more likely to, uh, I don't know, I just feel like I have less control basically when I have, when I'm using my knife, but sometimes I use my knife just, just cause it's fun, right? <laughs> so, I mean, either you can just lay it down like that shoot the sparks in there or you can kind of prop it up and then go ahead. Now when you're using something like this ferrocerium rod that's fairly hard composite you don't want to be doing this type of a technique you basically want to push your sparks down right to the very end of your rod and push them right to where you want them to go uh, as far as your tinder on your feather stick. If you have a little spot to aim for, they should be hitting that spot right there. So it just makes it more likely that you're gonna be successful because if you're doing flicking motions like that, this thing's never gonna go. So I got some flame. And then you just tilt your feather stick up like so. And watch as it burns. <laughs> so you could also add, this is the point where you would add your other feather stick. A little bit higher, creating lots of flame, making your chance of fire very very likely and you can see how easy it is to build upon something like this as far as it goes for the number of feather sticks you need to have to be successful it really depends on on what other tinder and um, kindling you're adding onto the flame Sorry, it's getting a little smoky, but this thing is still on fire and two feather sticks um, could easily do it. One feather stick can easily do it. It just depends what type of uh, tinder or kindling you're putting on top of it. You know, if you've got little fine twigs, one feather stick will probably do you good enough. So there you go. That's how you can get a um, successful feather stick to create your fire. Uh, these two feathers have been going for quite some time even though we've got some wind going you can see that it's actually burnt through <laughs> you know all it takes is uh, some practice and you'll be able to do something like this and it just really helps for fire lighting especially in wet weather in wet conditions so I really hope you guys found this useful for your feather sticks and for your fire lighting and hopefully this video will you know you'll be more successful out in the woods when you are trying your feather sticks and I suggest try feather sticks at home. You know, you can do it anywhere. You can do it in a condo. Just practice, go find some wood wherever you can. You know, saw it up and baton it up and just practice your feather sticks and eventually you'll get the hang of it. Eventually, you know, when I first started, I was biting in too much and my feather sticks would end up being really dispersed and too long. But over time, I just learned uh, how to do them properly and, you know, watch other videos. Don't just watch mine. <laughs> and you'll just get more of a feel on how to do it and then also the different wood and stuff like that will can also help those not so good feather sticks get going better and uh, on top of that you can also light your feather sticks with something like fat wood or say you got cotton balls and you get the flame initially sorry for the wind uh, then you can actually put your feather stick over the flame and then 
feather sticks that aren't so good will work in those scenarios too. Anyways, I hope you liked my video. Please like, please subscribe. I got lots of videos on bushcraft and you know, lots of videos coming up. Uh, we'll plan on trying to do some more fun things and I hope uh, you guys stay around for that. Uh, this is Dave from BC Bushcraft. I'll see you in the next video.